Hi everyone, welcome to YouTube University. Today we're going to be talking about the 20 things I don't like about my 2022 Kia K5 GT Line Premium Package. I have another video where I talk about the things that I like about this car. If you're interested, the link is in the description below. <laughs> The first thing I don't like about this car is the way the blind spot sensors are configured. Let me explain. For some reason, Kia decided that it was a good idea to deactivate the sensors if you're driving under 10 miles per hour or if you're driving 10 miles faster than the car next to you. This could be a safety issue, especially when they deactivate if you're driving 10 miles faster than the car next to you. As you can see in this example, I'm driving 10 miles faster than these cars and the sensors are not activated. If you want to change lanes, you won't see the warning letting you know that these cars are there. The other thing I don't like is that it deactivates under 10 miles. I get it that if you're on a complete stop, it doesn't need to be active, but as soon as you start driving, the system should be active at all the times. The next thing I don't like is related to the blind spot sensors. Kia has a setting, if you turn it on, it will beep as a warning before changing lanes, letting you know that there is a car next to you. I used to like these because sometimes during the day it's hard to see the small orange light. The warning beep lets you know right away that there is a car next to you. Now, the problem with these is that sometimes beeps out of nowhere, even when there is no cars next to you. It got to the point where it was really annoying, so I decided to deactivate the beeping. Now let's talk about the next thing I don't like and that is the wireless charger. It's nice to have a wireless charger only if it works. For some reason it kinda works with my iPhone 11. If I put it in there it starts charging but after a few minutes this light that indicates that it's charging will start blinking and it will stop charging. I found out that the phone needs to be out a little bit for it to charge so I put a piece of paper on the bottom to keep it in the same position but I had the same problem. I thought the problem was my iPhone 11, but the same happens with my iPhone 14, and this one doesn't charge at all, so this wireless charger is useless for me. Next thing I don't like is the sensors for the auto lights. If you had the headlights in the auto mode, the sensor will turn them on and off based on the exterior lighting. The issue is that it is too sensitive. It will turn them on even if you're driving under a bridge in broad daylight. This is a minor issue, but I don't like it. I wish there was a setting to adjust the sensitivity. The next thing I don't like is that this car doesn't have parking sensors. I understand that this is not a high-end car, but it is loaded with technology and radar sensors in the front and rear bumper. It would have been easy for Kia to add this feature, but they didn't do it. My wife's car has them. It is a simple and useful feature that I like. I wish Kia would have included them in the premium package. The next thing I don't like has to do with the remote start. If you turn on the car using your key fob or the mobile app, then, if you open any door and close it, after a few seconds the car will turn off. I don't know why this happens, I think it has to be with safety issues. If you don't want the car to turn off, you need to go inside and press the brake. The next thing I don't like has to do with the remote start using the app. If you remote start the car, the climate control will turn on as well, either AC or heater. Now, the problem with this is that you don't have the option to turn it off, or option to choose whether you want the climate control to turn on or not as soon as you remote start the car. You do have the option to choose AC or heater, but it would be good to have the option to choose to have it on or off. Now, let's talk about the other thing that I don't like. If the car is running and you get out and want to lock it, <laughs> good luck with that. You cannot do that. You can't lock the doors if the car is running. I don't understand why this happens, I used to have an old infinity, I could turn it on, leave it running and lock the doors without any problems. But this 2022 Kia does not allow you to do that. The next thing I don't like is related to the self-driving feature. Don't get me wrong, I love the self-driving feature of this car, however, there is one thing I don't like about it, and that is this little guy. If the sensor gets dirty, the self-driving feature won't be as effective. It will ask you to keep your hands on the steering wheel more often and it will feel kinda slow reacting to curbs. That's because the car can't see the road if this is dirty, so you need to always keep it clean, free of dirt and bugs. There is another sensor on the windshield that should also always be clean. The next thing I don't like is the chassis. I have this envelope so that you better understand what I'm going to explain. Imagine that this is the chassis, this is the bottom of the car. The chassis should be solid as a concrete slab and not have any type of movement. 
Now, the problem is that when you enter a driveway or parking lot that has a high slope, I feel like the chassis bends and the cabin makes some cracking noises. The noises are not coming from the chassis, the noises come from the plastic pieces in the cabin that rub each other. It is not that bad, it's not something to be worried about, but that's just something that I don't like. I always try to enter the driveways straight rather than an angle to prevent the cracking sounds. I think part of it is because the top of the car is glass and doesn't have enough support compared to the other trims that the top is one piece of steel. As side note, the cracking sound is only noticeable during the cold weather. I haven't heard it during the summer. Moving on to the next thing I don't like and that is that the trunk doesn't have a handle to close it. Kia forgot to add a simple and basic handle to close the trunk. You are forced to grab the trunk by the paint to close it. The problem with this is that if you just wash your car, you will leave fingerprints on it or if the car is dirty, your hands will get dirty. I don't like that it's missing a handle here. Another thing I don't like is the location of the button to open the trunk. If you get close to the car to open the trunk, you won't see the button. If you try to find it without looking, the first thing that you will find is a camera. The button is flat and it's difficult to find without looking and it's also too close to the camera. Next thing I don't like is the smart trunk. If you activate this feature, you either love it or hate it. I don't hate it, I just don't like it. The problem is that as soon as you get close to the rear of the car, the car will start beeping, letting you know that it's about to open the trunk. Most of the time, I don't intend to open it, but the car opens it for me anyways. This has become an inconvenience, so I decided to deactivate this feature. The panoramic sunroof has a small thing that I don't like. If you open the sunroof, this cover slides open all the way to the middle, even if you're not going to open the sunroof all the way. Sometimes I want to open the sunroof, but the sun is too hot, so I just want to close the cover and keep it open just a little bit so the air circulates and block the sun. Well, you cannot do that. You can either close it all the way, which the sunroof will close as well, or open it completely. You can choose to open it just a little bit. The next thing I don't like is that this car doesn't have memory seats. The EX trim has the memory system for the driver, but Kia decided not to add it to this GT Line Premium Package. This trim and the EX are around the same price, but we don't get memory seats. Well done, Kia. Another thing that I don't like is that the passenger doesn't have a power seat. You get a simple, basic, manual, adjustable seat. This is not a deal breaker, but it will be nice to have a power seat for the passenger as well. Next thing I don't like is that this car has a wired Apple CarPlay. Now, this is where it gets weird. The cheaper trim, the one with the 8-inch touchscreen display, supports wireless CarPlay. But the more expensive trim, this one, the one with the 10.25-inch display, doesn't support wireless CarPlay. It doesn't make sense, but Kia did it that way. Why? I don't know. The next thing I don't like is that the rear passengers don't have an AC band. This is the perfect location to have them, but Kia didn't install them. I have two USB ports to charge phones, but not AC bands. A minor thing that I don't like about the infotainment system is that sometimes it takes a while to switch audio. For example, if I'm playing music with my USB and want to switch to regular radio, it takes a few seconds to switch. It doesn't happen too often, but sometimes takes about 5 to 7 seconds to switch. I couldn't catch it on video, but I don't like when this happens. And finally, the last thing I don't like, this applies to any new car and to people that care about their cars, and that is that I have to park far away. I do this whenever I can because there's people that park next to you and they simply don't care if they hit or scratch your car. I like to take care of my car, so I do my best to try to prevent problems with people. If you're interested in watching the things I like about this car, the link is in the description below. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.